Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven6754 Gaming, and welcome to my how-to or tutorial of all of my mass uh, rigid body physics videos. Uh, a couple people sent me some requests, so I wanted to show you how to do it. Now, in the past, we would use the game engine in order to achieve this. Uh, we'd bake we'd bake it to keyframes, and you know, it was, it was actually really quite simple. Uh, but we don't need to do that anymore. And what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to set up our scene, and then we're going to get this started. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, I guess, and then we can kind of explain it as we go, I guess. All right, so first thing, we're going to right-click our light, go over here to Object Data, and we're going to make this a sun. And then I'm going to hit 7 and G, and I'm going to just drag. Then I'm going to hit 1, and I'm just going to, all right, it's out of the way. And the uh, sun, or I guess directional lights, but it's a sunlight. Uh, they don't really matter where they are. Only thing that matters is the direction. So you can have it inside the cube. You know, it, it doesn't matter. I just want it out of the way. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a plane. And there's numerous ways to do this. You know, add mesh space, add plane, shift A, mesh. You know, there's a million different ways to do it. And we're just going to bring it down so it's level with our cube here. And we're going to give it, let's just scale it up 20. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our camera. We're going to move our camera back. And I'm going to go over here to World Properties. Um, now, sorry if I'm going a little bit fast for you. Uh, this is this is more like the setup. This tutorial doesn't, you know, I don't assume that you're like, you know, 100% new with Blender. Uh, but I will explain what I did. I hit 7. And then I right-clicked the camera, and I hit G, and I dragged it, and then I hit numpad 0, and there you go. And then I went to World Properties, turned on ambient occlusion, set the attenuation to 2, uh, and then I'll just leave the samples at 5. And then I hit F12, and this is what it comes up with. And it's a little bit bright, so I'm going to have the ambient occlusion. Okay, uh, it's still kind of bright to me. That's better. Unfortunately... You know, it's not going to get too much different. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, uh, well, we need to add in some physics. But how do we do this? Well, over here uh, in our object tools, you see we have something uh, called rich body tools. And we could click and add active or we could remove it. And you see that right now we have a orange outline. And we can also, and you can use the middle mouse to scroll back and forth over here uh, you see that we have the physics we have a new option now called rigid body well when we select it our object becomes green it gets a nice green outline um, and so that means that you know we are physically our object is physically enabled now because this is our ground we don't want it to move so we do want to set it to passive and we don't want it to be a convex hull we want it to be a box collision Fast, simple, and it works much better than a convex hull on a plane. Trust me. Okay, so now we're going to select our cube, and we're going to set it to rigid body. And we're going to set it to box as well. And I'm going to hold control and move it up five. And then I'm going to hit alt enter. And as you see, it falls. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this back down here. Um... We're going to leave all this alone. Uh, I'm not actually going to explain all of this right over here. Uh, however, you can look this up after all. Remember, this is just a quick how-to. Uh, you could just leave everything at default. Actually, in the previous video, uh, I don't think I really modified any of this because there was no need because it's just a bunch of cubes collapsing onto itself. So the next thing we need to do is we hit Shift-D to duplicate and then right-click and we move it up. And yes, I'm aware you can, uh, um, you know, shift D and then move up, and you can hit Z to constrain it. Uh, but when you get a lot of cubes, and I mean like a lot of cubes, <clears throat> Blender starts to slow down, so you end up getting used to the right-click method, so you don't accidentally misplace them, because you know, undoing with, you know, an untold amount of cubes, yeah, it's not possible. All right, and then we'll hit Alt A. That's uh, how do you bake the uh, keyframes in, by the way, or the animation, rather. And I'm going to set this to 300. I'm going to go over here to Render Properties and Escape to stop it. And Alt-A again. 
and all the cubes fall. So um, this is my very simple and very quick how-to uh, how to do the uh, the massive physics and as you can see it, it renders pretty quickly and it bakes it all out really nice and smoothly and after it's done all rendering it'll actually play back at a pretty appropriate speed no no lag or anything that's fantastic okay so and we want to set our frame rate to 30 actually get ourselves some much more uh, there we go that's some much better physics don't you think yeah okay so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and actually you know what, you know what? let me cover one more thing okay uh, I typically set anti-aliasing to 16 but sometimes like that scene you really actually couldn't notice but there was no real big difference on my frame time uh, and you can also do sampled motion blur and to give you a good idea of what that looks like we'll just render out one frame um, yeah, you really can't tell. I could put it up to four. Uh, I normally do about two. Because uh, four kind of... Well, four is a bit overkill. See, that's that's a bit much. I mean, it might look nice to some people, but it's not very realistic, so it doesn't really look very nice to me. Um, so that's... This is pretty much... This is it. This is how I... <laughs> this is how I do all of it. Um, and then, I guess, what you could do from here... Is you can hit one and then hit five to go in ortho, and then hit seven to go into top. And now you have a brand new set, and we can actually go into textured view as well. And now you have even more cubes of awesome to deal with. So there you go. And you just kind of keep stacking until you. Uh, yeah, until you, uh, well, until you, uh, you know, have however many you want. There's only 159 cubes here. And it, it will start getting very laggy. So, you know, Blender will, like, freeze. And, you know, you'll just, you have to wait. And then you right-click immediately. And then you move them up. And then you repeat the process. And I have a current one that is about 600 megabytes without the physics bacon. It's just the data object. It's huge and I'm hoping it's going to look really nice. I mean it's very simple, you know, like my very first mass physics, but I'm hoping it'll be good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to say is when I output, I always output AVI raw. Uh, typically it's better uh, to do like PNG and then use something like VDub or even, you know, and put it back together again. Uh, but because these mass physics simulations are so simple, they don't have audio and you know, at most they're 30 seconds. ABI RAW works perfectly, and you know, you just set the output folder to the desktop or whatever, and you let it render overnight or, you know, whenever. Okay, so this is how I did it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too scattered. Um, kind of recovering from exhaustion at the moment. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and don't forget to join my Steam group. And don't forget, I also have daily live streams and I'd love it if you guys would join and thank you and see you guys um, well my next gameplay or whatever video happens to be up